Hello, all the cool beans. This is the Cool Beans Cafe. So first question. So I was doing this this morning, I said, and I don't have Novavax stocks. I just thought Novavax stocks would rise. So I was saying, hey, Siri, how is the Novavax stock doing? So that was 17.22% fall. And I was surprised that why is there so much of a fall? There, there should be celebration that hey, they've they've gotten recommended. So it turned out, let me share the news. I was curious. So this is drbean.com. It turned out Novavax had made FDA aware that there are some changes in the production or manufacturing process. I, I think they told FDA on June the 3rd of this month, 2022. FDA took that seriously and said, we will not authorize until we have looked into this, the manufacturing process changes in more detail. So I think that is what caused this uh, stock going down. So if you see here, so Novavax came out, this is today. Changes to Novavax manufacturing data were minor and process related sources. So Novavax submission of new manufacturing data to the FDA on June 3, just bef days before a vaccine advisory committee recommended its COVID-19 doses for use in adults was related to minor process changes, according to the company. But the late addition has added to the volume of information the FDA has to sort through before authorization. A report Thursday suggested that would be a delay. So I think this delay from FDA because they're reviewing the process has caused this stock to go this way. However, a source at Novavax speaking to Yahoo Finance on background said that early on manufacturing struggles and expectation from prior authorizations appear to be what is framing the perception of a delay. I do think there is this yardstick by which our process is being measured. That's one to two days and the FDA is saying we're going to do it when we do it. The source said, adding that the FDA has given no indication that there is any concern of an intentional delay in the process. On one hand, there is no urgent demand in the way there was for the three other authorized and approved doses, a point repeatedly made at the FDA advisory meeting this week. Novavax CEO Stanley Eric said as much as in a recent interview. I can't predict how long it's going to take the FDA to review the data that they have, he said. We'll be bringing product into the U.S. this month, and it will go through the normal release process and the essays you have to do, Eric said Wednesday. So that is, I believe, the reason for this issue. But look at this. I, I was looking at Novavax stock. So in 2018... And 19. So in 2018, they were 46, 42, um, 2018 at one point. So 46 ish. Then in 2019, they went down from to 18, 11 dollar to 4 dollar, 376 dollars. That was December 27, 2019, 399. Even I mean that that was weird, but I think that was the vaccine. And anyways. Uh, I don't think there was a question of vaccine in 2019. Anyways, they were down. So then they started coming back up. And this is 170 in, in 2020. Then here, February 12, 2021, Feb 12, 2021, they were at $289, all the way up from $4 to almost $300, $290. And then they have been tanking again since December 17. So in this six months, they went down from 217 to $41. And today they went down in the morning, they were what? 
at 48 and they've closed near 41. So that is Novavax. I think they should recover, but don't take my advice at all. I am not at all uh, qualified to give you advice. I was just curious, so I thought I'll share with you in our chit chats. Then there is a question that I saw. That question was, are there any PD ligand one expression inducers or PD one? So there is this herbal medicine attenuate PDL1 expression to induce anti proliferation in obesity related cancers. So they say that resveratrol, which are actually over the counter, and other herbal medicines suppress PDL1 accumulation and reduce diabetic effect. So I don't know exactly how well this is, but this is a study over here. I'll share this link. But please be careful over the counter things. Uh, PD type of molecules are very interesting and not to be played with like this. So talk with the doctor to say, is this even a discussion to have? So that's that. Luffy's downstairs. I think the door is closed, so he wants to go out. Luffy slept the whole day today, some, somehow. Now, monkeypox. Monkeypox. So U.S. now has 45 cases. As of June 9, 2 p.m. Eastern, monkeypox cases are 45. So which state has the most cases? New York. And then the second most cases, California. And then the third most cases, Florida. And then Illinois. Then Colorado. Colombia, Utah, and then many other state have one case. So this is the monkeypox situation. So, <laughs> how is everyone? So sorry, I actually, if you can figure out, I did not even, you know, shave today and take a. I take a shower before the lecture. I was so busy running around with the car's smog test that I didn't have time to actually prepare. So still, somehow I was able to put together that lecture. OK, so how are things? <laughs> Luffy stocks, Cynthia, yes. Luffy was sleeping the whole day today. I, that was curious. Normally, he gets up and goes out. Mega Moosey says, I'm in, invested in Powerball. Okay. Alquin says, biotech stocks are for people who think crypto is too stable and boring. <laughs> and I don't have Novavax stocks, so I'm not kind of trying to influence anything here. So John Snyder says, for those curious, over 2,000 confirmed cases of Guillain-Barré syndrome within eight weeks of COVID-19 diagnosis and over 400 cases of Bell's palsy after diagnosis with COVID-19. Okay, thank you. Janet says, what is a PD-1 blocker? So last two days, we've been talking about PD-1s and PD-1 blockers. Yesterday's discussion about colorectal cancer was about that as well. So... Imagine you start a car, you have a car parked in the garage or driveway, and you start it. When you start it, in the car, there is a brake pedal for you to stop it. Imagine that when you turn the car off, the brake pedal disappears. But when you turn it back on, the pedal appears as well. And not only one brake pedal appears at the driver's seat, imagine a brake pedal appearing everywhere on the car and anyone can press that and stop the car. That is the situation of the uh, T cells or the immune cells. 
when they become activated when they become activated of course activation means inside the cell gene expressions change and because of those gene expression changing messenger rnas are formed messenger rnas then help make the proteins with the help of ribosomes and then various proteins and enzymes are formed and they do various functions and that is how the cell becomes activated now imagine when the cell becomes activated one of the machines that it makes is a molecule called pd1 program death program cell death 1 we named it that way that molecule when it is formed it then pops up on the surface of the activated cell so that is a way to number one know that this cell is active and secondly if you stimulate that pd1 that cell becomes tame and stops being active it becomes exhausted it stops reacting even when there is antigen even when there are orders to that cell from antigen presenting cells to say activate work but if the pd1 is stimulated it will not work so that is pd1 now pd1 normal behavior is when the infection occurs or cancer occurs a bunch of immune cells become active when they become active they also pop pd1 on their surfaces and then as they are functioning and warring and fighting and they breaking the cancer cells and the and the infected cells they should stop so slowly the neighboring cells would keep pulling their pd1s to say stop and so slowly these cells would start becoming less and less active and their pd1 would start disappearing plus the new cells that are formed will not have pd1s on them and so then once the whole offending activity is gone the war is over the cells that are left and the cells that are produced new will not have pd1s on them it's not absolute so the density will be normal density that is the normal behavior of the pd1's expression and then stopping of it now if a cell becomes active for example it sees i'm a cell i'm a t cell and i see a cancer cell and i start attacking it and i become activated and when i become activated i pop my pd1 as well to say okay if you want to stop me connect with this pd1 i'm saying that to my friends my immune cell friends to control me and now i'm warring with the cells but what about this that if the cancer cell itself decides to pop the pd1 like ligand and connect with my break and stop it so that's what cancer cell do they they produce a lot of pdl1 on their surface which then connects with the pd1s on the warring cells the effector cells and they stop the effector cells when the effector cells are stopped the cancer cells just keep growing so then the pd1s can be blocked so that the exhausted cells come out of exhaustion and then they start reacting now there is a difference between exhausted t cell versus um tolerant t cell or self tolerant or energic t cell energic t cell means a cell who will just not care for the antigen so let's say my hand is my t cell receptor sorry janet i don't, didn't know if you asked for such a lengthy response <laughs> so let's say this is my t cell receptor i can bind with an antigen of this shape right so i have that and i see some place and there is an antigen on a cell that binds here and then if that happens i can now become active if i don't become active then i'm called to be energic i am called to be tolerant and many t cells are that way on the other hand if i actually connect with it i become upset i say that i should react to it i get co stimulation as well but somebody attaches to my pd1 and stimulates it and i say you know what forget about it so i am asked to fight but because the break is pressed i am not fighting 
that is called exhaustion and remember that european society had said that we are worried that with the with the immune boosters there may be exhaustion and i did that topic as well and that is also pd1 related this is another discussion of pd1 so it has a merit in uh, immune dysregulation long covid mecfs um, vaccine injury cancers and so pd1 blockers can be useful but this is of course a problem meaning blockers should not be used used willy nilly if let's say somebody blocks a pd1 takes a blocker when the pd1 is blocked then their immune system is just reactive to everything and that can cause a reverse action and that is immune system is over reactive and now destroying the tissues and cells and autoimmune diseases are rampant and the inflammation is rampant and now we have a different problem so because of that first dysregulation has to be seen then blocker given to correct the dysregulation this is not an over the counter supplement to say okay i'm going to take vitamin c and that would help me so margaret is saying parth pande wishing you an excellent outcome with your test so how are your did you get the results yet lisu is here so lisu how are you doing how is your family doing texas if you are here as well tell us about yourself texas is actually here so texas tell us how are you doing lisu how are you so lisu says hello all dear cool beans i hope all beans who are still not well will recover quickly and completely i've been drinking ajwain tea and it's reducing my post covid cough it really helped like a magic to for me thank you dog for that yeah this is actually my wife who did that to me i was telling a doctor friend that my cough will not go away and i could not so uh, i was taking st steroid inhaler antihistamines flonase and um fluvoxamine uh, not not sorry not fluvoxamine um uh, fem famotidine why all of those um uh, steroids to reduce inflammation at least to control it right famotidine to reduce any gastric acidity which may be causing let's say when i'm sleeping would cause regurg which would cause the if that acids or those little materials go in the bronchial pathway of the airways they would cause irritation of the airway which then causes cough so these are kind of things if somebody has unknown cough which is continuous these are the kind of things that doctors would do so i was on that plus i was on flonase to see if there is a post nasal drip so flonase would help with that i was on antihistamines to see if there is any allergic reactions going on or allergic symptoms going on causing the inflammation and post nasal drips would that would be i was on anti inflammatory so all of them did not do much and here comes three times when <laughs> and you saw it you can actually go watch those videos that within 2 3 days i was back to normal that was that was magical and i said it before as well i thought is it really the tea or was it just natural end of my cough time and so it just coincided i think it was the tea but anyways so dana king says what kind of tea was that so dana that is what um uh, lisa was talking about ajwain tea so ajwain is uh, carom seeds so if i go in here and i say ajwain seeds so ajwain is what is ajwain carom seed so they look like something like this so what she did was <laughs> so it is funny i i told her i said i told people that you gave me a jwan tea and you you have a jwan and you boil the water and put that she said no no you don't do it that way you have a cup of water 
a water the size of a cup then uh, you put a jwain in it then you boil that till it becomes half a cup then you drink it i said okay <laughs> so there is a magic in there for cooking that as well so that was a jwain dan robinson says does a single pd l1 molecule have enough juice to stop a cell or is there a threshold number that are required to put the brakes on so a cell would actually have a higher greater density of pd1 so we can actually see how many pd1s are on one cell i need to get luffy out pd1 density on p cells so if you don't mind i'm going to quickly step out and let we go out because he's going to keep um crying as he's doing so you look at this paper in the meantime and i will go to i'll be back it is funny luffy was actually sitting outside my door whining and so as soon as i went out he ran in front of me all the way to the outside door and as i opened it he jumped and went out okay so pd1 <clears throat> density i'll have to read up what is the density or count of pd1 on one cell but it is not one there are tons of pd1 on the surface and then of course and tons of molecules are needed to block them let's see if i can find density in advanced melanoma patients the cd8 t cell density in tumor so that is the cell density okay so that's not frontiers <clears throat> pd1 pdl1 blockade have we found the key to unleash the anti tumor immune response this is 2017 so if i looked for the word density in here so another study showed that the density of immunogenic antigens did not correlate with the t cell filtration and pd1 so here these biomarkers include high baseline cd8 positive and pd1 plus density at the invasive tumor margin and inside the tumor uh, density of immunogenic antigens so um, dan as much as i would love to find a an answer to this one i think it would take me some time to find it but general answer is it's not one molecule it's going to be a bunch of pd1s and then the bunch of pdl1s or l2s needed to put on the brakes and then it's also not necessary that once these are covered we are done because a cell is active it continues to make more pd ones so we have to kind of suppress it and then it stops Okay, so Lennon says, if you bought pharma stocks, which one and why? So 
I would buy, I would love to buy Pfizer type things, but they, you know that I am not very much in favor of Pfizer. Um, I would love to buy Moderna stocks because they're going to now ramp up their um, platform. Now they have deep, deep pockets and they're going to ramp up towards cancer. And same for the uh, BioNTech. They're also going to go towards cancer. So these are kind of, yeah, they're big now, but they are still smaller companies in terms of their technologies movement. And I think they would have a lot to do with cancer. Ramnik says, Luffy can also do Zoom calls. Yes. And I am going to do for the members a Zoom call soon. <laughs> Siddhartha says, Big Luffy. He was standing out here. <laughs> I thought he's somewhere else. <laughs> Susan says, oh, Papa Mew, yes. Doug says, Luffy break, yes. Tea versus coffee. Coffee. <laughs> uh, Iggy Pop says, if the FDA is indeed captured by big pharma and other pressure groups, then perhaps it's time for individual states to become more involved in the dr drug approval. And yes, they should have their own process. I can't even imagine that in our country, U.S., the whole drugs and the prescription and the the whole thing is controlled by either these regulators or the insurance. What is not controlled is the pricing. But everything else is controlled. And it is just weird for me to see one cannot get medicines the way they should. Casey says, I finally joined Dr. Bean. I've been watching for almost two years now. Thank you for all you do. Thank you very much, Casey. Lisbeth says, that's a cool answer, Dr. Bean. Thank you very much. Which one? <laughs> I had been giving multiple answers. Uh, I saw John's comment here and it went away. Uh, what did John say? John, you said something. Oh, here. Uh, John says, Dr. Bean, I'm so happy you're doing your talks tonight. There's nothing good on TV. <laughs> good. So you're saying that if there was something good on TV, you'll go there? So how would a cancer mRNA vaccine work? So that will be very interesting. So think about it. Let's say a patient gets a cancer. Normally, Today, our cancer therapy, although these are much better than where we were before. Before cancers were, still cancers kill a lot of people. But before this era, the cancers were for sure very difficult to manage. So now we can do this designer cancer therapy where a patient's cancer cells are taken out. And you see that what kind of specific antigens are dysregulated in them? What kind of abnormalities are present? How can we identify these cells separate from the rest of the body? Today, for example, what do we do for ca cancer chemotherapy? We give a chemotherapy, I'm generalizing, and we say, all right, all cell divisions are stopped. Now our bone marrow is dividing and making new cells of all kinds, WBCs, RBCs, platelets. So now we are not making cells of our essential protection and oxygenation. Our GIT layers are making new cells all the time. We are continuing to swallow our existing cells and the new cells are being formed. That is how we keep our GIT layers fresh. Otherwise, every time we eat and there is some microscopic puncture, sometimes we burn our mouth, then that, that would stay forever and that would not be good. So how do we get repair without any scars or anything? Because we're just replacing the cells there. Same for the skin as well. So when you say, okay, stop all, now the, what does cancer do? Cancer also does a lot of growth by dividing, dividing, dividing. So you say, stop all divisions. So when all divisions are stopped, the cancer cells division is stopped, plus our normal cell divisions are stopped too. And we cannot stop all divisions so vigorously that 
all the cancer cells die because in that press process will kill a bone marrow and the skin cells and GAT cells. Again, I'm just taking a very high level view. So you can't really do that. And that is why it is not easier to just target the cancer cells and remove them. So then what do you do? You try to figure out what are the abnormalities in cancer cells that are that can make them different from the rest of the body so we can only attack them. And so when you have such sophisticated system that you could make mRNA, which could make the proteins that would appear within the cancer cells, then you can dysregulate them or you could go and activate the immune system cells and give them powers through the mRNA. So, But that would be a designer therapy. It would be, for example, I said this once before as well, there may be outlets in bigger cities or in various parts where a cancer patient goes, they do their biopsy, they culture their cells, they see what kind of cells are these, then make specific mRNAs that would help make proteins to attack those cells and kill them. Very interesting. Lisbeth says, if a person has a chronic infection, are they more at risk for a cancer? Not necessarily. The only thing is, whenever we abnormally divide and create inflammations and create that environment, that predisposes people towards cancer or dysregulation of the dividing cells, which can become cancerous, number one. Number two, sometimes... Let's say somebody has a chronic in infection, which probably means that their immune system is not working very well or immune system has been suppressed. Now, if a cancer cell pops up somewhere and they're not able to handle that as well, then that would become cancer. So cancer cells pop up in all of us all the time and we, we repair them or kill them. But if immune system is not working correctly or is intentionally suppressed, then these cells have an opportunity to keep growing. Path says, how, how to remember pharmacology drugs, names, and classifications. So there are multiple ways you can just do the cramming of it. But normally, uh, do me a favor, Google Cornell Learning Method. Cornell Learning Method. I like two learning methods, which I really love. Uh, one is called Cornell learning method. So in the Cornell learning method, there is a uh, gap between learning once and then twice and thrice. And then is the memory palaces. I love memory palaces. So if you look at how to build a memory palace, for example, you can create memory palaces of microbiology or for pharmacology, and it, you would just remember it like beauty. Then there are lesser superior forms of writing it down or, or learning something, looking somewhere else, then speaking it out or trying to remember it. These still tend to create... Uh, gaps in memory, but Cornell's method or memory palaces, they are a little more superior. So Lernan says, what's your take on EMF? Some say it is dangerous, the others say it won't harm you. No idea. <laughs> so this is a good question. I'll have to study it, but I, no idea. Ramnik says, if I read something three times, it is much better than cramming. Yeah, but with the gap. Uh, 
KC says, so maybe we won't have to slash and burn anymore. Hooray, two times cancer here, lots of damage from the cure, yes. So hopefully these therapies can be more targeted. But please don't take the stock advice from me. It, it was just, I would love to have Moderna stock. So Lisa says, I'm good. Husband is better. His stomach was growling today with the blessed sour. <laughs> he ate soup. But recovery is slow as his fatigue and weight loss are severe. Praying that he recovers fully and soon. Lisbeth says, so exciting, yes. So this is the same thing. Casey says, I read the people with MKS have an asso associated risk of solid cancers due to inflammation. Yes. And uh, would this be a risk in long COVID? So again, if it is continuous inflammation and then suppression of the inflammation by steroids, then there are those kind of possibilities, but not yet fully known. Paz says, thank you. You're very welcome. So meanwhile in America says, can someone still produce and show antibodies if they have this PD-1 dysregulation? Yes. So uh, these cells are still functional, but they are less functional. Or the immune system is still active, but it is less active or abnormally active. It is dysregulated. It doesn't do what is the right thing to do. So yes, they would still produce the antibodies and they would still produce inflammatory markers, but these would be dysregulated. Okay, so now that I have you with me once more, so uh, Mega Muzi says sun exposure and activation of the virus. Sun exposure uh, and activation of virus. Elaborate a little more. And my question to the team here, <laughs> let's say if I open a new one. I was thinking of having this channel Thursdays are drawing days. It was supposed to be drawing day today, but I was just totally out of my um, comfort zone today. I was out. So drawing days, Thursdays, right? Then for the rest of the days, how about first two or three days. <laughs> the, the Thursday looks too far away. So anyways, first th two or three days, we curate questions. Curate questions. And then there has to be some way, even last time when I tried to do these uh, questions about um, Novavax, there were just so many questions. There has to be some way to say, let's prioritize following questions. So should this be that, let's say questions go to um, YouTube. I don't ask on Twitter. I just share the link on Twitter for the YouTube. And then over here, the questions are those, let's say we take top 10 questions that have the most likes on them. And that way I know that, all right, this is a question that people are interested in. And then we take top 10 questions and then we respond and discuss them. So let's say Friday becomes question days, answer days, Friday answers. And now S Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday becomes a, just a regular chit chat. So that means Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, there's nothing. Wednesday, there is chit-chat. 
Thursday there is drawing, another chit chat, and then Friday is also chit chat. But that is the answers for the top questions here. What do you think? I'm just making it up, so this may not be the best one. Elkin says Tuesday geopolitical day. <laughs> Elkin, you're gonna get me killed. I'm I'm joking. I have no idea how to talk about geopolitics. So. Elquins turtles names we have to do that too so tell me John says looks good so first three days questions so that means on a Monday morning I will create a post saying what are your questions for this week so people will write questions and others will like them so whichever questions are most liked I'll pick them up and we'll discuss them on Friday then on Wednesday, we'll do a chat. On Thursday, we'll do drawing. And on Friday, we'll do the answers. That may be interesting. If it is, tell me. And we'll go from there. <laughs> Susan says we need 10 mods walk a mole. Yeah. <laughs> Learn and say Saturday is missing. No, no Saturday or Sunday. Lisbeth says sounds fine. Should we it's, give it a go? Okay, we can give it a go. So that means the, the coming Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, on the Monday morning, my morning, 9.10, which may be a little later for East Coast, I will create a post. And then we can write questions there. If there are questions that are liked more than others, those are the questions I'll pick up and answer on Friday. Um, Wednesday, we'll do a chit chat like this. Thursday we'll do drawings and Friday we'll do question answers. Now, for the questions, I think we have to be a little more uh, specific with the questions. When somebody says to me, tell us more about SARS-CoV-2, that's a very open question and that one question can encompass two years of discussions. So, real question, something that really is your curiosity, something that is your exploration. Similarly, asking in one question, discuss this study. Well, that's a huge, just like today's study. Today's study, even if I discussed it for a couple of hours, it would not have finished. They did so many tests. So if there is a study to be done, I think what we should do is, number one, those kind of things that studies should be in the hands of those who are members. So they can say, all right, let's talk about this and they can drive this and they are taking responsibility of making these things available. Secondly, in the questions, even if it is about studies, we should have a specific question that, hey, I read this study. Within this study, I'm confused on this concept. Can you discuss that? So I think that will be more useful than to say, discuss this study. Or... The third thing that I thought was not very interesting for me is to respond to people's substacks. As much as I use substack as well, and I'm trying to put more uh, cliff notes in there or summaries in there, it, I love it that they're not that much, uh, they're not censoring platform. At the same time, because they're not censoring platform, there's a lot of BS there as well. And I see <laughs> lots of bullshit. And so when when somebody says, hey, can you comment on this substack? It becomes a very weird situation. Number one, they these folks come up with their own strange theories and their own strange statistics. And good for them. It's freedom of expression on substack, so good. They, they have a point of view. They have done some homework. They want to show you their homework. 
it doesn't make sense for me to go and refute them and say you're wrong and it also doesn't make sense for me to take the responsibility of countering all of them i would have to literally <laughs> spend hours and days and you'll have to actually take care of all of my bill payments so that i can just look at these folks data and figure it out and that's i have to run a business i have to i have to earn as well to do my bill payments so don't have that much time to scrutinize a lots of uh, derived data and those things similarly there are lots of incorrect theories there are lots of engineers and i'm an engineer as well so it's not an offense to engineers lots of engineers or accounts people or researchers or others who have just done their own little thought of hey i think it is this way and if i i try to in the beginning i used to try to say this is incorrect because of the following and then the person would say well no i don't think that you how about this and then i'll have to go one level deeper and say this is the mechanism and they say well how about that and then it just at the end of the day they'll tell me you suck you are wrong i don't trust you i trust him more and so in the meantime i would have just debated and discussed and wasted time so i think substack like things may be off limit for us to or people's blogs should be off, off limit to us studies medical concepts those things that are bothering us where you are actually curious to say what about this thing i'm curious about it it bothered me or i'm i'm confused those i think we should focus on these should be more aligned towards medical sciences or if you are curious about some mechanism i can explain the medical science but i cannot explain people's derivations <laughs> yes so alexander Carter says specific question did dr bean's car pass its smog test yes so today was my wife's car's smog test um what happened was she was not feeling well and so it was at 2:45 so then i had to run out at 2 o'clock to get the smog test and then it took 15 20 minutes and then come back so the whole time so i when i was back at my desk i didn't think i'll be able to do justice to that study but then i tried to just take the essence of the study and put it in those slides i was still able to draw them so my car's smog test is tomorrow at 10:45 hopefully hopefully that will pass as well hers is passed so car 99 says have you been rooting through the pfizer data dumps no there is just so much data that going through that all is it's a full time job i want to but it i just don't have time guy telfer says can you do a study on plasma phoresis or or a talk we can plasma phoresis is a good technology to talk about i think we can do a talk on the regular one if i have not already done i thought i had done it lenin says so it's three episodes per week yes wednesday thursday fridays lisbeth says we go with the yeah so we try it and if it works out good if it doesn't we'll change it <laughs> revelation is going to get me in trouble do mask wear for monkey pox i have no idea so monkey pox was supposed to be in the bigger droplets so now they are saying it is also in the aerosol i can't comment on this one they are all over the place with this meanwhile in america says could pd1 blocker make mcas inflammation worse 
or does it redirect the immune cells rather than just ramp them up? Very good question. And let me answer it in a, a little more interesting way. So short answer could be, could the blocker make MCAS worse? Short answer would be no. But here is how MCAS pathway is. Innate arm, then the naive T cell, T helper 2, B cell, B becoming plasma, plasma releasing antibodies, antibodies then lodging on to the mast cells. Then, so this is the first exposure, first exposure. Then the second exposure on a loaded mast cell with the primed mast cell, as we call it, when these short circuiting occur, then it becomes upset. So this pathway has less to do with PD-1 because it is it does have, let's say, helper cells over here. But in the future, once the mast cell is primed, it works directly with the antigens. So if you gave PD-1 blockers, it would block this area in the cytotoxic T cells it can do some help on the innate arm, but um, it would probably not do anything about the um, MCAS, neither increase nor reduce. That's what my thought is. So Dana says, can COVID cause depression as long COVID? Yes. Um, this happens a lot. The psychological issues because of inflammation in the brain are very common. So yes. And on top of that, the isolation and, and worry, and there are many financial issues. So what's the latest info on how long will the natural immunity of having had Omicron last? No idea, but the question really should be, if you can handle it once, can you handle it again? The next time you should be able to handle it better, but that's if the, if the virus doesn't change and the immune system doesn't change. So with this, how about we break for today and then we continue tomorrow. Now, tomorrow is Friday. Do you want to go in detail with the same discussion, the same study or something else? Give me an idea of the topics that are in your mind. And maybe there is a topic that people would like more. Thank you very much. Like, subscribe and share. And I would see you tomorrow.